Good morning, good people. Welcome to day 6 of 100 days of devotion. And this morning, I want us to talk about a really beautiful topic. And it's entitled, Dealing with Compassion. So just before we get into our devotion of today, let us take a minute to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for today's devotion. Thank you for everyone who is here watching. Lord, we are grateful for the gift of life. And Lord, I pray that by reason of the sharing of your word, that you will fill our hearts with compassion, that we will deal with people with compassion. We will also, Lord, be conscious that you have had compassion over us. We will receive that compassion and our lives will never be the same again. Holy Spirit, teach us to love. Teach us to show mercy to the people who do wrong to us. Teach our hearts to be still and just to enjoy the word this morning, even as we share together. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and Amen. So, this morning we're talking about dealing with compassion. And I feel like this is one of those topics that is really dear to my heart because I have personal history with this topic. So, just before I start, let me share this story with you. So, growing up, every time I would walk by the street and see a kid, a street kid, maybe about four years, three years old, who is crying and there's the mucus running down their nostrils and they look abandoned and all that. I felt like I wanted to give them a spank. Who, who else felt this kind of, of pressure or this kind of, of thought just well up in their heart? So that was one thing I, I dealt with as a child or as a young person growing up. I struggled with compassion. Every time I saw somebody struggling, I felt like I wanted to make it worse. And this is something which as a young adult, I started to process. Why did my heart think about people struggling in that way why did that no one to help them and make things better for them so other people spoke about compassion if they saw a beggar on the street they wanted to help but that was not me if i saw a beggar on the street if i saw a leper if i saw somebody who was lame and asking for arms i would want to do something to them and i cannot explain where that came from but well the bible says that the heart of man is desperately wicked and i feel like many people are born with this kind of heart's disposition. Many people don't understand or don't know how bad it is when the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. And so I believe that God changed me by his word. And this morning, I want us in our discussion to talk about how God's word can change you. What's your personal story with compassion? Have you always been a compassionate person or is the Lord still working it out in you? So first, I'd like us to know that compassion means to empathize with someone who is suffering and to feel compelled to reduce the suffering. So the fact that when I saw their suffering, I rather felt as to increase it or to do something worse meant I did not have compassion as a teenager. So if I saw you weeping, I wanted to give you an extra spank, okay? So that was crazy. And of course, I'm no longer that person. In fact, people who know me now will hardly relate with that part of me, with that Part of my life it doesn't look like who i am so compassion means to empathize with someone who is suffering and to feel compelled to reduce the suffering to have compassion according to scripture means to have empathy and that is the ability to understand and share the feelings of other people and to cause them to prosper as a result so when the bible talks about having compassion the bible is not just saying feel compelled to make it better for these people the bible is saying make them prosper so not just understand their pain but actually make them to prosper make them to be well that is so powerful because when we ourselves are in pain that should suggest to us how god wants to deal with us god wants not just to reduce our suffering or our pain god is really interested in making us prosper in making everything better for us so let us see what the bible says about compassion okay i love when we study the scriptures because the word of god just breathes on us these are words by which we live so first turn your bibles with me to first john chapter 3 verse 18 first john chapter 3 verse 18 the bible says dear children let us not love with words or tongue but with actions and in truth that verse is such a self-check for me because 
the Bible is actually saying, don't just love with words. I've been in communities where people will express profound love for you, but when push really comes to shove, when you really need them to show up for you, they are nowhere to be found. So people will tell you, I love you, I'll be there for you, I will never leave you. But when push came to shove, they always walked away. All right, they were never there to just extend that love to you in actions, to be there for you, to pray with you, to support you financially. I've been in communities where people would rather raise money to help a stranger than help one of theirs who is suffering. And the Bible is saying, do not just love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. So love for real, guys. Now, let's read another verse. Zechariah chapter 7, the verses 9 and 10. Zechariah 7, the verses 9 and 10. The Bible says, This is what the Lord Almighty said, Administer true justice, show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. Do not plot evil against each other. When I read this verse, for example, he says, do not oppress the foreigner. So many people listening to this have had experiences where they moved to a foreign country and they were treated differently. They were treated poorly. Okay. Um, people have been treated poorly because they were, you know, poor. They did not have enough resources. They had no social background or no powerful socioeconomic background. They were fatherless. They were a widow. And God is saying, don't oppress these people. If someone is a foreigner, if they're a widow, if they're an orphan, you know, if they're, you know, a minority group, says, don't oppress them. He says, but administer true justice, show mercy and compassion. He's saying, relate with their suffering and cause them to prosper. So if a foreigner were to come to my country, God is asking me not just to understand that they are in a new country and how hard that must be for them, God is saying, cause them to prosper. Make it go well for them. This is what the Bible says, guys. So when I read this verse and I understand God's mindset about compassion, where he says, show mercy and compassion to one another, you understand that God is really intentional about us being tender toward one another. All right, let's read another portion of scripture. This morning, I want scriptures to instruct us. I want us to be sure and to be aware that this is the Father's instruction to us. Turn your Bibles with me to Philippians chapter 2, the verses 1 and 2. Philippians chapter 2, the verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Philippi. And he's saying, if you have found any comfort in the love of God, if you have found any common sharing in the spirit, so if you have found any advantage in having God's love, in having God's spirit, if you have found any tenderness in God, he says then, do the same to others. You see, so Paul is making a suggestion that the way we are able to be compassionate with other people is that we ourselves have been receptors of God's compassion. So if you have not received God's compassion for you, it is impossible for you to pass it down to others. People would say, hurt people, hurt people. Every time I see somebody trying to hurt another, I immediately understand that this person is themselves hurt. Or has not received love now recently i was having a conversation with a friend and i said my love has no malice so this person was saying you know i went through very severe pain and i want the person who caused me this pain to experience exactly the same pain and i asked the question if that situation was painful to you why would you want somebody to whom you have expressed your love to go through the same pain why I said, that might suggest that you maybe never loved them or that you are starved of love so much you want them to drink of your pain. Now, God is saying, if you're going to extend compassion, then you must first have received 
his compassion. So God doesn't just expect us to demonstrate compassion, but first to receive it and then to be channels of compassion. So first for you and then through you. In fact, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. So again, Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus and he says, Just as Christ forgave you, forgive each other. Just as Christ had compassion over you, be compassionate towards one another. So if you have not received the compassion of Christ, if you're not aware that God loves you, that God has compassion over you, that over your frailties, when you are in difficulty, when you face diverse challenges, God has compassion over you. I have spoken with several people who believe that God has no compassion. He's a dictator. He just walked into the room to punish you and get you to do his will. He doesn't care about your needs or your wants. People have all sorts of ideas about God. And many times, I found out that the kind of parents we were raised with will create a clear picture of how we will see God. So, for example, if you were raised by an authoritarian parent or father, you would tend to see God that way. If you're raised by parents who were merciful, who gave you room to make mistakes, you would tend to understand that part of God quite easier, right? So, sometimes we struggle with compassion because we were raised in an environment that wasn't really conducive, that did not express love or demonstrate the love of God to us. Praise God. Now, let us read Matthew chapter 18, the verses 21 to 35 together. And this is a very beautiful story that Christ himself shared. And let us read that. So, Matthew 18, the verses 21 to 35. The Bible says, Now, this is the parable of the unforgiving debtor. Now, verse 21, the Bible says, Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? Verse 22. No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions. Verse 25. He couldn't pay, so the master ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, Please be patient with me, and I will pay it all. Verse 27 Then his master was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand of dollars. So this is the NLT version. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. Verse 29. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged him for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were upset. They went up to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid the entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Now, this is Jesus giving a parable. And he says, This great king forgave a man a huge debt, and the man could not forgive his fellow servant. And this is us several times. Most days, this is us. Sometimes people will share something they are struggling with me, and I understand them, I pray with them, I encourage them, I counsel them, take them through all kinds of sessions and through the word, and they are getting better. And usually, just about the next day or about the week after, somebody does something similar to them or somebody is struggling with a similar thing and I hear their comments to this person, they are so insensitive. 
I've had people who came up to me and, you know, struggled with their, their body weight and they would cry and say, I feel like I'm overweight or I feel like I'm depressed. I'm not okay. And behind, I understand what they are going through. And the very next day or maybe two weeks later, somebody else says, I'm struggling. I feel depressed. And they tell this person, hey, you're doing too much. Okay, wake up from there. Stop being a crybaby. And when this other person tells me, I ask myself, but wasn't this other person going through the same thing just recently? Of course, I, I don't say that because that would promote strife. So I don't share that information. But I always go back and just process how that many times, even though we have received the Father's love, we struggle. We struggle to pass it on to other people. God in Christ Jesus demonstrated his love and compassion towards us. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, even enemies unto God, he demonstrated his love for us in sending his son to die. So we were still his enemies. We were in a sinful nature, born sinners, and God sent his son to die for humanity. God forgave humanity for their sin. He had compassion. If you read the Bible, you realize that Jesus' presence in the world is the ultimate act of compassion. Okay, as in, we did not even deserve that sacrifice. We had no rights over the death of Jesus. We were enemies unto God. Mankind was sinful in nature. They had turned away from God in Adam and Eve. But because of God's great love, we were treated with mercy and are called to live lives of compassion. So Christ Jesus, when he was on earth, he demonstrated God's compassion every time he was in a situation. The Bible says, but Jesus looking with compassion said for example you know you look at the guy suffering with leprosy right now if you study the old testament anytime somebody was struggling with leprosy and they had to come around a gathering where people were they had to shout from a distance leprous leprous so that people will walk away from them so if somebody was struggling with leprosy in scripture it means this person had not had physical touch probably for years or for months or for as long as they had been suffering and then jesus sees the leper and the first thing jesus does is he touches him you see that was the ultimate act of compassion what is that leprosy in your soul what is that thing in your soul that you feel jesus is rejecting you for this morning jesus just wants to touch you he just wants to put his hands on you he wants you to know that he understands Look at an example of that compassion. The Bible says in Matthew 20 verses 30 to 34. So if you read around that portion of scripture, the Bible says, Two blind men were sitting by the roadside, and when they heard Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. So that's the next verse we went down. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. Lord, they answered, we want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately, they received their sight and followed him. What is that thing in your life which you believe that Jesus will not have compassion over you for? This morning, you can cry out from the depths of your heart, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, have compassion. What is that sin? What is that wrongdoing? What is that thing lurking in your heart? What is that weight? What is that burden? You can cry out this morning, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Let's read another portion of scripture even as we conclude. The Bible says, Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. The Bible says, Then they came to Jericho, and Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. This is the state of many of our churches, many of our gatherings. Sometimes you go to seek help from your pastor or from your leader and it feels like the people around him are gatekeeping. His protocols don't want you to have access to him. They're like, be quiet, stop calling on Jesus. How many times are you struggling with something and people tell you that if you call on to Jesus, he would tell you to be quiet? So many times we hush people 
who are trying to turn back to God. Someone is sincerely struggling with something and they are trying to turn back to God but we hush them. A lot of times the church has hushed people. Christians have hushed other people who sincerely want to turn to God. And this morning, you know, Jesus is saying, let them come. Verse 49, Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he is calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. So this morning, Jesus wants to say to you, Go, your faith has healed you. If you can only have the courage to say, Lord, have mercy, have compassion over me. What is that thing that you're struggling with this morning? Bring it before the Lord. What is that part of your heart that is struggling to show compassion to others? God wants to give you his compassion. It is only by receiving the compassion and mercy of God that we are empowered to show it to others. If you're struggling with bitterness, with unforgiveness, with strife, with anger in your heart, I know that you've read all kinds of books on how to forgive, how to let go, but I'll tell you the ultimate way to let go of pain is to receive Jesus is love. When you are in pain, God understands. He can relate with your feelings. He's touched by them and he causes the whole of creation to act towards making you well. God does everything to make you better. And let me end with this portion of scripture, Hebrews 4 verse 15. Many times I read this portion of scripture and, I'm, and I break down into tears. The Bible says in Hebrews 4 verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liability to the assaults of temptation, but one who has been tempted in every respect as we are, yet without sin. The Bible is saying we don't have a Lord, a high priest, because Jesus has become our high priest, who is ignorant of our weaknesses. He's not ignorant of your weaknesses. He's not unable to sympathize with your sins. He's not unable to sympathize with your liability to the assaults of temptation. He knows how much you've tried to stop that thing. And this morning, Jesus is saying to you that if you can receive his love, if you can ask him for mercy and compassion, he will respond and you will see a difference in your life. And so in the name of Jesus, I pray for you that this morning you will be reminded that God has compassion over you and that his mercies and compassion never fail. His compassion never fails. I pray that you will be reminded, even as the Bible says in Lamentations 3 verse 22, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. And in the next verse, the Bible says, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So this morning, I pray that you will be conscious that God's mercy for you is new every morning. For everything he forgave you yesterday, he's ready to forgive you for all of that again this morning. I want you to know that if you can stay in the place of mercy and compassion, you will become a channel of mercy and compassion. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Now if you listen to today's devotion, I, I hope that you can listen a second time and that time around, listen with your pen and your notebook and live by these words and may your life never be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. See you tomorrow and God bless you.